So earlier today, my rubber stamps were bothering me, as they tend to do every few years. And then I sort them out and, and group them together and think, okay, I'm going to sell them this time because I'm not using them. And it never fails that as I'm sorting them to get ready to sell, I start using them. <laughs> and then I pile them all back together and shove them in a corner and, and I do the whole thing over again a few years later. <laughs> I have sold a few over the years, but y'all, I've got a lot. They're all, you know, vintage red rubber that had various mounting systems on them at one time. And and I just, I don't know, I treasure them still to this day. And it's been 30 years. I started stamping 30 years ago. So anyway, I'm going through the stamps. I'm looking at them. I start thinking about ways to use them. I remembered this page in my planner that needed something right here, and she caught my eye, and I just felt like she really needed to go right here. Now, let me get a little closer so you can see. You see how she's kind of colored? It looks almost watercolored, sort of. Okay, I'm going to show you how I did her, and... Um, because it's easy and it's fun and it's, you know, it's not really precise, kind of messy, which I like. And um, you can do this too. So, what you're going to need is a piece of deli paper. You could probably use wax paper for this. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but I, I don't see why it wouldn't work. You're going to need a rubber stamp. Now, let me tell you about this stamp. She is from Enchanted Ink back in the day, y'all, you know, vintage stampers will remember Candace at Enchanted Ink. This is one of her rubber stamp catalogs from the year 2000. And I've kept it all these years because she wrote on it. I used to make sample cards for her to use at conventions and stuff. And... Um, she gave me this catalog partly because she had some new images and one of them was this fairy and you see her name she named her after me <laughs> and there are several in here that she's named after people from the rubber stamping community back then and a lot of us that helped her at conventions and made cards for her so yeah they're really cool and she liked very like fantasy whimsical um, images, lots of fairies and castles and goddesses and stuff. I love love her images and I still have a lot of them. And this particular one, her name is Gloriosa and she was drawn by an artist named Paul Butler. So that is her and she's who we're going to use today. Anyone heard from Canvas? All y'all, y'all old <laughs> rubber stampers. I think about her all the time, and I've lost touch with her over the years. So I'm, I'm hoping she's still around and still well. Um, okay, deli paper, your rubber stamp, and then you're going to need some kind of permanent ink. Of course, again, mine is vintage, but I have a whole bottle of it, so I just keep re-inking this silly pad over and over again and using it because. It's good permanent ink. So I'm gonna ink up this girl and stamp her on the deli paper like so. She doesn't have any kind of a backing on her, so I'm just gonna take my block and be careful not to uh, bump her. And then I have to stand up over her to get enough leverage to press down because. I don't have any strength left in my entire body. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. And then lift her up. Oh, she's lovely. Lovely, lovely. So, I've got another one that I did earlier. And I just went over her and, you know, kind of heat set her. And now to color her, I thought... You know, my whole idea was to do something watercolory because I didn't want to fussy color her. Let me move in just a little bit. Yeah. Because um, that, yeah, that just irritated me. I don't, I don't have the patience for that. So, what I've got, these are the colors I used. 
these are acrylic craft paints you know like deco art whatever little cheap craft paints and I'm going to turn her over and just paint the back side so I'm going to take a little brush and then I've got this kind of flesh color and you can kind of see on the back side here so I'm just going to color her flesh and I'm not going to worry too much about staying in the lines because you know like I said I want it kind of watercolory where you don't stay in the lines that's the look I'm going for so I'll do that and then let's see I think her outfit her clothes do a little purple I think that was like a strap and you're not going to see all of this through there it's kind of like using your jelly plate what you put down first is what you're going to see mostly you know what I'm saying so there's that let's put some of this down here just cuz and I think she's probably got blonde hair or screaming bright yellow as the case may be and you can kind of dry the paint as you go along if you don't want it to get too, you know, blendy, runny, weird. You just take your heat gun and dry it a little bit. And I had my watercolors out because, you know, that's what I tried first. And watercolors on deli paper just don't really do, yeah, see, it just kind of beads up and it's too light so that didn't make me happy but let me make sure she's kind of dry I did go in on that last one I did and I used the watercolor just to kind of put a little dot because I'm going to paint I'm not on the deli paper now I'm on the acrylic uh, ink and I, oh <laughs> that's really scary looking <laughs> okay <laughs> that's not quite what I did last time I don't know what that's going to look like from the other side, but hopefully it's not as frightening <laughs> as it is from this side. <laughs> okay, so I gave her a little bit of color on her eyes and then a little bit of color on her, <laughs> her nose. It's supposed to be her mouth. Oh my God. Okay, see, it's okay from this side. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, anyway, I'm going to put a little bit darker there so it shows up. Yeah, if I had a really fine line brush that I was using, that would be much better, but I, I don't get time for that. I don't want to mess with it. Okay, so you can get as detailed or as not detailed as you want, and don't worry too much if it looks super horrifying from this angle, because it'll be okay. Now I've got some, do her wings, we'll do a little pink, maybe some of this blue. My paint's been sitting out for a while, so it's getting a little gummy and some green and I just make sure that I'm I want to cover every little part that I can and if you get curious as to what's happening you know check the other side you can kind of see where you are and I was wanting kind of a brown for this I don't know what she's sitting on a mushroom I guess but what fell into my hand was copper so that's what I'm using and it really won't show metallic from the other side but that's okay I just wanted something kind of dark Okay, I think she's pretty much, yeah, she's pretty much covered. She looks good. Her face is a mess. She looks like she's been in a fight and has bruises on her face. But that's okay. We just wanted the suggestion of color. <laughs> and I put a dark blue around the outside of the other one, but 
I don't like it so much, so I'm going to look for a lighter blue. Uh, give me a sec. I'm unprepared. Maybe this one. And this is just to go around the edges. Now, if you're going to fussy cutter, you know, you probably won't need that. But I'm not going to be super fussy about my fussy cutting. I'm just basically going to do that, you know, kind of go around the edges, but not really fussy cut. So I just want this just to have some... Uh, color up and cover up any areas that uh, I'm not really covering them up. I don't want any white showing, that's what I'm saying. Even when you glue her down, the um, deli paper kind of disappears. But this just kind of gives her a border. Okay, there she is. Now, she looks frightening, but that's okay. I want her, I want all the paint to be completely dry before I cut it out. So give me a minute. And there we are. Okay. So this looks like this. Which I think is kind of kind of pretty. Now, I'll just go around, cut her out. And see that's, you know, I'm leaving that little border around her, which is why I wanted the, the extra color, the blue around the edges. And plus, this particular one I don't know what I'm going to do with because I've already used her in my planner, so I'll put her someplace else. Lord knows, I don't, I'm not lacking, you know, journals <laughs> to put her in. So, there we have it. And then I would probably go in and, um, Use an exacto to kind of cut out these little areas right here. Like that and there. And if you you know don't want to be that precise, you can just rip her out and go for it as is tear around it instead of cut. But now, see how lovely she just looks carefree, kind of watercolored. And then you can glue her down to whatever. So, that is all I wanted to show you today. Let me find my, my one that I did so you can get another look. There she is, and that background is just some uh, napkins and a little torn piece of paper and stuff. But I think she looks just right there. So, that's it for today, y'all. See you next time. The end. <laughs>